tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. He says, so do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Ain't that the truth? Most of us are being crucified between two things, yesterday and tomorrow. The regrets of yesterday, the uncertainty of tomorrow, and we still got to deal with the trouble of today. He says, don't borrow from tomorrow. In other words, this might happen tomorrow, this might happen tomorrow, this might happen tomorrow, this might happen tomorrow. All these things might happen tomorrow. How am I going to make it tomorrow? And when you withdraw from the bank of tomorrow, you've increased the burden of today. And you gotta pay interest on both. So you've added to yourself a burden you were never meant to have. Listen to me, listen to me. It's okay to plan for tomorrow. The Bible talks about planning. You can plan for tomorrow. What you can't do is get unraveled about tomorrow. You can't worry about tomorrow. Why? Because the only thing God is promising you is enough for the day. Lamentations 3.23, His mercies are new every day. Give us this day our daily bread. God is only guaranteeing you today. So when you start thinking about tomorrow, you've gone further than God has promised. Well, what about tomorrow? He'll meet you there. Today has enough trouble of its own. And you know if you can't even deal with the stuff in your face today, you're not gonna be able to handle that plus tomorrow stuff today. He says, do not worry about tomorrow. All I'm trying to tell you, somebody look at your neighbor and say, stop it. You can't worry no more. You don't have a right to worry. It's a sin to worry. You've insulted your father when you worry. Because you've said to your father, the birds can trust you, the flowers can trust you, but I can't trust you. You've insulted God. But if we had a testimony service here today, and if we could invite the children of Israel, the children of Israel would testify. We were in a wilderness, and we didn't know where we were going to get water and where we were going to get food. But God had food in a rock and rained down cornflakes from above. If the widow of Zarephath was here this morning, she would testify, I was down to my last meal, and me and my son had only one meal left. But when I put God first with Elijah, God took that bread, he took that oil, he multiplied it and gave us enough to retire. If the disciples were here to testify this morning, they could tell you they were with 5,000 men, not counting women and children, and they didn't know how they were gonna feed them. But a little boy with some sardines and crackers gave it to Jesus first, and Jesus multiplied it, fed 5,000 women and children, and had 12 baskets full left over. If Jesus were here, he could testify from John 6, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me, he says, will not thirst, and I will give him living water, and I will feed him the bread of life. Somebody ought to bless his name up in here that God can be trusted even when you don't know how he's going to do it when you put him first.